So let's ask ourselves exactly what is Secure Shell or SSH? Now a long time ago when computer networking first came out people were connecting remotely across unsecure networks to administer uh, remotely administer computers and to file uh, copy files across back and forth across the network. Well, a lot of these methods were unsecure. Uh, they were not able to send traffic, network traffic, in an encrypted manner. So things like usernames and passwords and even the data itself would go across the network uh, unencrypted, in clear text, as we say. This made it easy to sniff and actually grab that information. An attacker could grab that information and easily get it. So Secure Shell was invented to remotely to connect to another computer securely in order to share files, perform remote administration tasks, and other things. Now Secure Shell is more than just a protocol, although it is a network protocol itself. It's also a suite of applications. Secure Shell is one of them, SCP, SFTP, the Secure Shell file system, and so forth. There's quite a few applications actually built into the Secure Shell. But Secure Shell is a network protocol, actually, and we'll talk a little bit more about how it interacts as a protocol in just a moment. Now, Secure Shell works on a wide variety of platforms. It was originally invented uh, for Unix-like operating systems, Unix, Linux, uh, BSD, and so forth, but has been ported to a wide variety of platforms. Linux, most Linux distributions actually come with it built in these days uh, as part of the packages that are installed when you install Linux. Uh, Unix has SSH uh, available to it, and we even have SSH now available for Windows because Windows, unfortunately, does not have a secure means of network communication built into it for remote administration by default. Apple Mac OS also can use Secure Shell since it's essentially based on FreeBSD these days, and of course BSD. Now, some platforms, as we said, come with SSH built in. Linux is a good example of that, whereas some particularly Windows, requires Secure Shell to be installed as a separate package. And we're going to actually do a demonstration for you on installing Secure Shell in Windows and using it. Now you should know that there are different versions and variants available for Secure Shell. Uh, there are some open source ones out there. Uh, the original one, as a matter of fact, the version 1 protocol, uh, is really no longer used because it's uh, a little bit insecure. It has some vulnerabilities built in. And when Secure Shell was first developed, it adopted more and more proprietary software, so eventually there was no open source software in it really. So some other folks uh, forked the development, uh, some folks who uh, worked with the BSD project actually, and invented Open Secure Shell or Open SSH, and it was originally for BSD, but it has been ported to other platforms as well. And that's the one we probably see most commonly is the Open SSH implementation. Now, getting back to the network protocol, Secure Shell is a TCP protocol. It operates at the transport layer uh, under the TCP protocol. And it operates by default on port 22. Now, the reason you need to know this is in the case of a firewall, for example, you may need to go and open that port so you can use Secure Shell through that port on the firewall. But it's also neat to know that from a, a network analysis perspective. You need to know that so that if you ever see this traffic in a network sniff session, for example, you'll know what it is. You can change this port, by the way. Uh, you can configure your server and client to operate on different ports if you like. Now, Secure Shell is primarily a command line type of application suite and protocol, but you need to know there are GUIs that exist out there for Secure Shell clients. And of course, normally we find these on the Windows boxes, although there are some for Linux as well. And you can also use Secure Shell through a web browser. So, this is our brief introduction to what Secure Shell is, and we're going to actually show you a little bit more in just a moment about how Secure Shell works and how to install it and configure it. But you, now you know what it is, so let's go ahead and, and get right into Secure Shell.